everybody, Last Outrider here with another video for you. I know you're all excited about that. This time, we're talking about GW Media. Games, workshop media, releasing TV shows, streaming videos, animated products, you name it. I guess live action too. If you're talking about it, Eisenhorn, I don't know what the anthology is going to be. Maybe it's a mix of both. We've got, uh, we've got, I'm excited about this. I'm excited about this. If you remember my last video about this, when they announced that they were working on the Eisenhorn show, I said, okay, I'm a little cautious about that until I hear who's going to pick this up. Working on a show really isn't that exciting. So apparently the answer is GW Media is going to pick up the show. They are going to distribute it somehow. Could be the way Disney Plus is distributing it on Amazon servers, or maybe, oh, maybe even Netflix picked it up. Right? Netflix publishes just about everything you can imagine, so it's it's very easy to assume uh, uh, they could pick up something like GW, or or are they just going to create their own streaming company? put it on somebody else's servers, the way uh, Disney Plus did with Amazon Prime. Who knows? But the point is, it's an in-house product. GW is making GW stuff, which is really the only way it realistically ever could happen. I mean, there would be so such a tight, tight editing of, of any type of Warhammer or much less Age of Sigmar storylines that any out third party studio would just feel strangled to even try to have any type of creative leeway on a GW story. <clears throat> so that's exciting. Now what do I think about this? Quite honestly, I feel exactly the same way about this as I felt about when I heard uh, there was going to be a Deadpool movie. And when I examined uh, the parallels between these two situations, they're almost exactly the same. Um, think about 10 years ago, you had that first teaser trailer, unofficial teaser trailer by Blur Studios of the Deadpool movie, which then became greenlit to be a Deadpool movie. But at that point in time, everybody's now terrified. Is this really going to be a Deadpool movie? How can you possibly bring a character like Deadpool to the big screen? It's not possible. How could we do it? I mean, last time we saw Deadpool, he had no mouth. I mean, are we going to have, is it going to be spun off from that? Are we going to have people like that writing Deadpool stories? Just, just cancel it now. Don't torture us this way. And we had a similar situation with Space Marine. You remember that little abortion that came out? 40K's first movie? How scary. No, if you can stomach that, go, go watch it. Similar situation uh, to the, like I said, no mouth Deadpool, uh, where you're going to get something like that continuing on. Now, now, we have GW working it, and we have the same concern. Are we going to get the same type of grim, dark storytelling, visually representing as we get in the books. Now, it's one thing to write this stuff and let you imagine it in your own little head, but to actually put it on a screen to let the world to see, possibly people who are, probably people who are GW illiterate, see this and say, what the hell am I looking at? is going to be the reaction by many people. You see, at least Deadpool had, had, you know, a little buffer with humor. That's how they were able to make him socially acceptable. I don't think GW has that option. There's not going to be a humorous 40K. So I see this as streaming directly to something like Netflix or Amazon Prime or their own servers, you know, where there will be lots of disclaimers of, hey, hey, you know what? Take a breather before you watch this show. This is uh, Peggy 18, you know, rated R thing. Um, 
not four kids. <laughs> okay? That's what I imagine. Uh, at least that's what I hope. Because that's how they presented Deadpool. He was not... It was a big warning beforehand. Do not take your kids to this like you're going to go see Iron Man 3, okay? It is not that. It is an R-rated show. We got blood. <laughs> we got F-bombs. We got uh, 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 drugs. We got things that you are not going to expect to see in a superhero movie. And Deadpool is not superhero you should expect to see. Uh, in the same way, if you are going to look at the Imperium of Man as the good guy in 40k stories, that's about as much as the anti-hero as Deadpool is an anti-hero in the Marvel Universe, right? Technically, you're going to say Inquisition and Space Marines are the protagonists, the good guys of 40k, but you know, you, you, <laughs> you really need to be kind of a 40K insider to see how that's true. If you just experience 40K for the first time, you're not really going to understand why the Imperium is at all considered the good guy in, in Chaos the Bad Guy. They're both going to look pretty messed up to the uninformed viewer. So, so... GW is going to have to present it that way if this is going to be a success. Um, going back to my other videos with my cautious acceptance of the Eisenhorn stories as, as one of the, I guess, pilot or, or flagship products for, for Games Workshop Media. I don't think this is going to be an adaptation of Eisenhorn. I think this is going to be a reboot of Eisenhorn. I think it's impossible to make, and it would just be a dumb idea to make a faithful um, adaptation of, of Eisenhorn books to screen because they just don't fit in the 40K universe anymore. Um, Dan Abnett says that himself. Years ago, like 10 years, he was already saying that he's changed in his view of 40K and his development as a writer of the 40K in 40K universe that he would not write Eisenhorn today the way it was written back then. And the 40K universe itself has actually changed to the point that it's simply an unacceptable story in modern day 40K. Let's look at Pariahs, for example, right? I mean, back when Eisenhorn came out, Pariah, the Pariah gene was created by Necrons to create Pariahs. They experimented on humans and created these blanks, these anti-psychers, um, as a mutation. That's gone now. There are no more Pariahs in Necrons. So you, that whole narrative is no longer applicable in 40K. Um, the concept that Eisenhorn was creating his own little private army of pariahs no longer makes sense. There was no Sisterhood of Silence when Eisenhorn came out. So it made sense to try to, for an Inquisitor to try to hoard, you know, blanks then, but now, with the Sisterhood of Silence out there, you're basically trying to, to recreate an organization that already exists and would probably have a problem uh, with you collecting um, pariahs for your own use. I, I have a feeling they might show up and say, um, yeah, you're kind of stepping in our jurisdiction here. Um, but you see what I'm saying. So, so for those two reasons right there, even just the knowledge of how the how pariahs work in relation to psychic phenomenon is is more fleshed out now. So the, the idea of a psyker falling in love or being in physical contact with 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 a blank was unpleasant 
back then. Simply anathema. Now, you might as well say you're an invading bacterium falling in love with a lymphocyte in a human body. It's just, it just makes sense. They are, they, are, they are not just opposite attracts. They are literally forces that annihilate each other. It's like antimatter falling in love with matter, okay? It does not work. There is no chemistry there. So that has to be rethought, fundamentally rethought. Um, and it's, you know, one thing I notice about videos about 40K is there's no nuance, right? Um, when you watch videos on YouTube, they're either going to sit there and say, this is just the worst thing that ever happened to 40K. Or on the other hand, they're going to be sitting there saying, this is just the best thing that ever happened to 40K. All you have is one or the other. There is no middle ground. Um, and, and that's sad. But not surprising because it's it's just you know people are just trying to hype things or trying to trash things. So of course there's no middle ground because there's no real narrative. There's no real opinion. It's just agendas at work. So I'm going to be excited to see an Eisenhorn reboot. I'm going to be excited to see how Dan Abnett envisions Eisenhorn today if he was writing the trilogy today with the whole existence of the Horus Heresy and the Siege of Terra books coming out with all of the knowledge that we have now that didn't even exist as an idea back when for oh, Eisenhorn was first written. That's what I expect to see brought to video. It's going to be a, a new product. It's going to be an Eisenhorn reboot. Eisenhorn re-envisioned by Dan Abnett. And along with Games Workshop also having to bring things uh, up to date. It would be the same as if they announced they're going to do the Inquisitor War trilogy uh, on GW Media. Yeah, I can guarantee you that would not come to the screen the way it's presented in the books. It's simply not possible. Um, so that's what I think is going to happen. As for the rest, I'm excited about the anthology. Uh, the way I understand it is this is going to be less of a presenting of all the old stories in a new media. Like, oh, look for all your old stories coming out in... in, in video and more of an opportunity to push us into into the future that's what i look forward to that's what i think this is going to be good for it's 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 how do we quickly release new content not how do we rehash old content um i look forward to things being released for the first time in video, you know, not from a white dwarf, not from a story in a black library, but for the first time, we're going to hear about a new 40K idea straight to video. That's an exciting concept that I look forward to. Um, and that's what I think they're going to do. They're not going to just uh, rehash and republish everything that's out there, although there will be some of that. I hope there's more new content than there is a repeat of old content. Because I already know what the old stuff is. I already had the Horus Heresy. I, I don't need to go through that entire thing being brought to video before you show me something new. I would prefer to see a lot of something new and 20% of something uh, from the books. Uh, and that's how I hope the anthologies are going to work. Now, the Blood Ang the Angels of Death uh, confused me a bit because I said, wow, this is going to be Angels of Death. It's going to be a, uh, a Dark Angels thing. And then the Blood Angels show up in the trailer, and I'm like, oh, okay. Now, 
on a, on, a, on, a, on a personal note, I really hope they attack Erasmus or something. You know, I really hope, you know, and this is like in deep top secret file, but somebody's in the back room saying, hey, we're going to bring Lord Inquisitor to, to GW Media. And nobody wants to talk about it yet. That, that is an announcement that I'm looking forward to. Um, so, so to recap, this needs to be adult content. It needs to be adult content. This cannot be a four kids media. Some of it can be, but in order for it to truly be a 40K product, um, it, it, it needs to be like Deadpool, you know, it needs to be bloody. Okay, there, I, I can't see a PG rated Warhammer 40K and still call it Warhammer 40K. In my mind, it simply would not be. Um, so that's, yeah, that's everything in a nutshell. I hope you liked it. I hope, I hope that kind of explains what I see coming on. And until next time, bye.